and I didn't realize that I paid like five bucks for it and the last one that sold, sold for like 450. We're at the swap meet and we go to our first booth that's barely breaking down and guess what I see? Curtis, oh, what's that sign? Come show us, bro. God of War display. Dude, God of War 2 sign. Last time we were at the convention, I seen it. I seen it at two conventions already. I was kind of walking around and I just kind of peeked into my eye and I was like, how much do you think this is? So I lifted it out, had perfect little indentation. I was like, this is a grail. So I asked the guy, 130. So we got a deal. Jeez. Look at they got me on the bottom. Dude, the, the last one I saw had like a frame. <laughs> Look at this thing in the frame. It's so good. I have that many. Kratos. I'm at the same booth as Curtis, and we never normally start at this booth. And I, I've seen this guy at like higher end thrift, like thrift cons, that kind of stuff, at like Long Beach. So I go here and I'm like, hmm, let's see what he's got. Look at this. This is sick. Look at that. So not only. The buzzies. Not yeah. only. The buzzies. Like how, how did I miss that? Not only is it single stitch, so it's vintage, on a marina tag. It's Mighty Ducks, but it's branded with Disneyland. Right when I walk in, Mighty Ducks mixed with Disneyland. It's single stitch, it's clean, it's beautiful. Mighty Ducks, if you grew up in the 90s, when I did with the, the movies and the animated and even being right down the street from Anaheim, well, like 15 minutes, the Mighty Ducks was huge. I have to pick this up. That's what makes it cool. I'm all about the fact that when you, me and Retro Rick are super into combining two things. You know, you gotta say this was Hawaiian shirt mixed with horror. I don't know, I like when things are mixed. So, what'd you say you wanted on this? Uh, 40 bucks on this. What if I give you 40? That's perfect. <laughs> For the price, 40 bucks. If you know shirts, that's a steal of a deal. Even he was like, when I pulled it out originally, he was like, Oh, that was actually meant to go to a different thing that was like more for like high-end clothing buyers, but I'll sell it to you, 40 bucks. Take it, it's mine. I do like it, I appreciate really cool. you, bro. Thank appreciate you, dude, that. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. What a great booth he's got today. I love it. Look at that mummified gun, Ricky. Dude, I don't even know how you're supposed to shoot this. Dude, it's a practice gun. <laughs> it teaches, it is, I'm serious. It teaches you how to use it. Look at the shot, whoa. Did, did it actually look alright or did it look kind of dumb? I don't know. Damn. Let us know in the comments. Alright, so we go to this one booth. Uh, he has Nintendo games, Dreamcast games. Ricky, what do we got? What do we got? We got some Dreamcast games. Twisted, check it out. Twisted. Look, 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 look at Roller Rage. Look at Roller Rage. Tons of NES games right here. Tons. Silent Service, Golf, Mag Max. I used to love the heck out of Ring King, Turtles 2. Top Gun, Fighting Golf, oh, Virtual Tennis, Virtual Ultimate Fighting. Ricky's going wild, he's yeah. wild and out right now. Oh look, what is a rental it? case. Makes it so much cooler. <laughs> I like that, I might buy this one because it has a rental case. This just reminds me of Rick's episode. Oh lately. yeah, how about this? I'm bad. <laughs> Yoshi's Cookie? Dang. There's gonna be a lot of digging in this one, baby. All right, we'll Perfect. dig so you guys uh, don't have to watch too much digging. But we'll come back. We're like, hey, dude, how much of the how much of the prices will you like if we bundle it? Will you give us a better deal? He's like, no, 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 no. The prices are really good. And I was like, uh, all, right, all right, let's check them out. A lot. Will you? Uh, the price is uh, the price is what yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. I I, I I put really good prices. On. Okay. Okay, man. We literally pulled out video game price chart, and every game was above video game price chart. So I'm like, ah, ah. we we had it passed. Pricesharing.com has price an app now. Oh, they do. They do. But. Yeah, most of the games were, I was bummed. It was Kirby, there was X-Men, there was Shinmu, there were so many good games. I just, I, I couldn't, I, I can't overpay for them. I just can't. You know what Retro Rick would do if he was here? Here I am, doing everything I can. Hey, this guy's beating up your booth, man. <laughs> I'll buy it. I'm gonna buy this. The Ninja Elite Series. It's basically like redesigns of what happened in the you know the original movies, but the 1990 movie. But I love them in their little coats like this. It's so my favorite thing from Ninja Turtles. Still, is the original. Here you go from the original movie. Thank you. I appreciate it. I used to love that when I was a kid. I thought it was so cool that Raphael would. He would say the D word and he would yell it into the sky. Jared will insert it right now. What the heck was that? It looked like sort of a big title in a trench coat. You're going to look out of here, right? Come back here! I'm not finished with you! 
Well, Raphael used to do it, but this is Donatello. I thought that D word was Donatello. What? <laughs> Cowabunga! <sighs> there it is. Ricky's looking at it. Sealed! I, I might have already gotten this one, but I can't tell right now. I can never have too many. That's true. I can't. I quit. I can't, I can't okay even there? talk right now, dude. So you got to make an ID joke. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I bought it. I got it for the kids. It's mainly for me, but I just say it's for the kids. That way, my, when my wife watches this, she's like, oh, this was so nice of you. Yeah, it was really nice of you. What game is that? Turtles Kawadunga? Hey. It's got all the turtles in there. Look at that. Name them. Uh, yeah, name them. No, no, no. Name we can name them. You name them. Uh, I'll give you one. Smith Schmo. Hyperstone Heist. Uh, Will Ferrell. <laughs> um, Tom Cruise. And Rip. Pretty close, right? Here I am. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here he is. That's what, that's what happens for making fun of Rick. <laughs> What is it, bro? What is it? It's the memoirs of President U.S. Grant signed by the president. Really? Yeah. Is that real? Yes. Are those real? They're real. Yeah. <laughs> They're real. Yeah, the man of many words. He just laughs. laughs. There's two of them. Isn't Holy cool? cow. Yeah. What? It was like, it was like a Barnes and Noble kind of thing. New York City, like yeah, the book signing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Nerd. If you guys like being on the show or do you hate being on the show? What's your rating? One to ten, what do you like? Yeah, I show? love it. You love it? It's What's your best, rating? Like ten, I guess. Uh, that sounds <laughs> real <laughs> I love it. Dusty, what's your rating? How do you like what's your rating of one to ten? How much do you like being on the show? Negative five? Hey, Dusty gets the most love in the comments. I've seen it yeah, all the time. Right, dude. Everybody hates me, bro. I'm the, I'm the villain. You're definitely the most commented about, though. Yes. The villain? You're, no, you're just the most commented about. I know, dude. I try to charge like 5% over eBay. I go back to Anna's booth. Anna always has cool stuff for us. It's, it's always unexpected, too. Like, they never tell us they're held, holding stuff for us, but it's just there. They're like, ha ha. All right, let's see. Let's see, Ricky. Let's see. Wait, I think earlier I brought some stuff over. Oh, look at these. These are cool. Old Happy Halloweens. These are kind of sick. I like these. I like these. Oh, a little heart with tag. Ooh, let's go. What's up? Good morning. Good morning. I hit some stuff earlier. Is it still hidden? Aha. Let's see. And I find a ton of Starlog sci-fi magazines. I'm a huge fan of the Starlog look. It was mostly like Star Wars type stuff, even some Star Trek. There was also some Rocketeer stuff in there. Ugh. All right, let's see what I grabbed earlier. It was too dark earlier. It was too dark, like Ricky, too dark. <laughs> <laughs> look at this, Ricky. Oh, dang. dang. This would be perfect for my basketball. Look at these. For your basketball? Look at unused. Baby, baby. Dang. Baby, baby, baby. And then, uh, oh, these are all star logs. So I know these aren't like valuable. They're just people like them. Yeah. They're star logs. Super cool. All like monster. Oh, look at that. It's all the toys. That's really cool, actually, Rick. Licky. I called you Licky. Why did you just hey, call me Licky? Hey, Licky. Check this out. Revenge of the Jedi. Dude. Schnitzel. Blade Runner, Return of the Jedi, a lot of Star Wars it seems like. Wow, this was definitely a Star Wars guy, but it's all these, you know, this is, oh, Dark Crystal. Ooh. Ricky likes Dark Crystal. You like some Dark Crystal. Right, what's this one I'm gonna be pull up? What's it gonna be, Curtis? I'm gonna pull it up, yes. Uh, Jason. I'm gonna pretend I know. 85. I'm gonna maybe put this one back. Greatest American hero. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, the Greatest American, Napoleon That's Dynamite. That's the Greatest American hero in the middle. Oh. Uh, Oh. 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 <laughs> there was unused tickets for bands like Judas Priest and there was like Rocketeer sealed stuff. So this was a cool find, an unexpected find, and I just bought them all out. Pretty 60, 80, 100, 20. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate I it. Did. Your tip. You know, you always gotta you always gotta give them the tip if you want a good I deal. Know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry for being stupid, but that's okay. No, 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 no. Okay. She likes it. Oh, yeah. These were at the bottom, too. They're sealed. So this kind of stuff always is awesome. But yeah, I wanted to talk more about this. Look, unused tickets 
Bon Jovi and Judas Priest. Unused, baby. And more unused. What do you think of those? You think they're cool? <laughs> yes, that's a yes. <laughs> I didn't pick out through like, oh, I like this better, I like this better. That's how you get the freaking deals. You just show up and say, hey, bro, I got cash. Look, he's filming us. He's filming us. Ricky. He's Hi, filming how you? us. Oh, okay. Hi, how Something you just discovered. All right, so look at this picture, right? See a little girl with the Mickey? Yes. At the same booth, you found her Mickey. <laughs> Our mission, return her Mickey. We're gonna return Ricky's to this Mickey. girl, whoever she is. He's is. gonna call her on the Mickey. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello, E.T. from home? We go to Dusty's booth, and he has things that he normally doesn't have. And I'm talking like funky VHS, but like weird VHS. So I start looking at a lot of this VHS, and there's like apparently this lot Dusty said, he confirmed with us that it came from someone that worked for Prince. That's where all this came from. So it was a lot of like teaser VHS on the big VHS, which I still don't know what they're called, but it was a lot of funky different horror stuff. Oh, just with that Dusty's. Oh. All right, grabbed a few things. Haven't really looked any of this stuff up yet. Uh, I will after. First, I got Raw Nerve Sealed, which I don't know what this is. It kind of looks thrillery, horror-y, so I had to pick it up. I got this one VHS. Uh, Shock Cinema Volume 1, Lippy Look, the label looks like super uncommon, 1990, super very weird, very janky. And I looked it up and I didn't realize that I paid like five bucks for it and the last one that sold, sold for like 450. Apparently they're rare, like Volume 2 and 3, I have Volume 1, which apparently might be more rare because you can't find it anywhere, it's not even online. I feel a little bad about that. Um, and then Led Zeppelin sealed, which I love this one. We got the watermarks. If you don't know what watermarks are, some people want to learn. It's like the branding that goes over this. So it's like almost like a little stamp. Uh, then I got Cindy Lauper. Hey, and these came, you said, oh, you're not Dusty. No, not. Dusty said they came from Prince's, a guy that worked for Prince. Was that what it was? Worked with him. Worked with him. Thank you guys for the nice, real timely response. <laughs> and then the last one is, Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter, Plan 9 from Outer Space, Earth versus Fly. I think it's like old horror type stuff. Hopefully it's not like adult type content. Sometimes when you get stuff that has like this weird title, like Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter, might be kind of funky, but uh, uh, let's see, let's see, super hyped. And then, out of nowhere, I find a bunch of Happy Meal stuff. Oh, this is sick. It's party time, the mask, oh my gosh. Street sharks? Okay, I gotta dig in here. Holy moly. From out of nowhere. Okay, I just got me a second. A real excitement moment. Oh yeah. And I'm talking all the original Happy Meal boxes, but good ones. E.T., Tiny Toons, uh, Looney Tunes, uh, Animaniacs. They're all in there and they're unused. Yeah, they're kind of a little bent. They're not like in mint condition, but they're unused. A ton of unused Happy Meals. I think I might just ask him for the bundle. Animaniacs. The old school hamburger, Grimace, original Happy Meals. What else we got here? Tiny Tunes. I'm gonna pull them out so you guys can see along with me. This is not my favorite way to film, by the way, but sometimes I will. Tiny Tunes, Go Bear. Okay, uh, yeah, ET. Okay, I'm in. Bye bye. They're there for me, and I, I have to buy these. Dusty actually tells me 25 bucks, which is a great deal for all those. All right, so Chris told me you already, you already wanted five each for these, so that's fine. Oh my God, there's some. But now these. Happy Meals, bro. Nobody wants these, bro. Only I want these. Give me 25, everything. Whatever. Easy. I got you, dog. 25 bucks. Easy. Wax on, wax off. 20, uh, 100. Uh, down 10? <laughs> see, he thinks he knows my prices, bro. It's 120. <laughs> What's up? I got you the other side. Let's see what you got, dude. I'll show you over here. All right, got it. Chris passed these to me. A couple more of those massive V, I don't even want them. I'm scared. Those masses VHSs, that, I don't even know what they're called, I'll be honest. You can play these on like original editing type stuff. But look, this is all trailers for horror stuff. I was a teenage wolf, the brain eaters, wonderful end of Oz, side hackers. Some people pay good money for some of those. I get to keep some of those. I'll pro there's a lot of doubles so I can keep a good amount. But what I'm gonna buy next is this plate. We talk a lot about the 90s on our show, like all the time, right? We're always freaking out about the 90s. Hey, this 90s shirt, this 90s toy, this 90s anything. Why? Why are we always saying 90s? Why is 90s something we talk about with clothing, toys, games? It's like our prime favorite of everything. And instead of explaining to you here, I'll show you guys.
the 1990s. A decade that whispered its secrets to us through the rustling leaves of memory. Now a bittersweet treasure lost in the sands of time. It was a time when innocence ruled. When life flowed with the simplicity that seems almost surreal now in a digital age. My brain explodes with nostalgia as I revisit the hollowed halls of what it was to live a 90s childhood. A time when every day was a treasure chest of memories waiting to be unlocked. And even though our minds can relive those days, the knowledge that those days are forever gone leaves a sense of melancholy in my soul. I didn't think you'd show. You know why I'm here. Magic Johnson's Super Slam Dunk Basketball for Super Nintendo. One of the most cherished facets of 90s childhood was the profound sense of freedom. It was an era when the world felt safe. When parents sent their children outside to explore, an adventure beckons at every corner. Street lights served as our gentle reminders to head home. But until then, we were explorers of the wild unknown. Tree houses were our fortresses. Secret bike trails are escape routes. And hide and seek games stretched into twilight, echoing with laughter and the joy of friendship. The innocence of those days, when the world seemed vast and full of wonder, and the weight of adulthood was a distant speck on the horizon. <sighs> the melodies of the 90s, those timeless tunes that still tug at heartstrings, they were the soundtrack of our lives, belting out lyrics that we loved with friends, losing ourselves in the rhythm and the shared camaraderie. We knew every word to every Blink-182 song by heart, and the endless attempts at mimicking Michael Jackson's moonwalk became impromptu dance-offs in our living room. Music was more than just entertainment. It was a key to our emotions and a portal to a world far beyond us. It's me, Mario. Gaming in the 90s was a revelation, a world within our grasp. Super Mario 64, the endless library of the Super Nintendo, and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, these were just some of our passports to adventure. The clunky graphics and rudimentary controls didn't matter. These games ignited our imaginations and challenged our problem-solving skills. They brought friends together. We would all huddle around our consoles, sharing the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat together in the same room. I recall the countless hours spent in front of a television with my brothers, immersed in those pixelated worlds. Those were some of the most carefree days of my entire life. And Nintendo addicts have plenty of gadgets to fill their video appetite, including cereal, clothes, and scores of other trinkets. It's a fad that at this point knows no limit. Velma Escape 13 News on the Peninsula. Saturday mornings were a cherished sanctuary, dedicated to the wonders of cartoons. We reveled at the antics of the Animaniacs, marveled at the beautiful art style in Batman the Animated Series. And whether we knew it or not, we were being taught lessons in life from shows like Captain Planet. And who could forget the joy of unwrapping a McDonald's Happy Meal, discovering a miniature toy version of our beloved cartoons inside? Those Saturday mornings were a cocoon of happiness, a weekly ritual that made the world seem like a place of infinite possibilities. Again, there's a sense of sadness that those simple pleasures have been replaced by the constant buzz of notifications and the endless scroll of social media. And yeah, in a time before the reign of social media, friendships flourished in the real world. Birthday parties meant pizza, cake, and unforgettable sleepovers. We'd huddle in dimly lit rooms watching movies until the early hours, or, or stay up late sharing secrets, forming bonds that time could not erode. Our friendships were forged in the crucible of shared experiences, not measured in virtual likes or followers. I worry for the friendships of future generations, knowing that they aren't able to forge their friendships in the way we were in the 90s, where it was truly with the person you were with. Um, no, my no name in high school has been Furby. Do I look like one? You don't look like a Furby. The 90s nurtured our creativity. We crafted mixtapes as love letters, etching our emotions into every song choice. I would even say the Etch-A-Sketch became a canvas. And I have friends that would say the Tamagotchi taught them responsibility and even the value of nurturing and taking care. And in an age before we had instant answers on the internet at our fingertips, we turned to things like encyclopedias, libraries, our parents, teachers, our friends, Nintendo powers, fueling our curiosity and igniting the flames of discovery. Not
not sure how I feel knowing that this hunger for knowledge and the joy of creating with our own hands have been overshadowed by the convenience of Google and the allure of instant gratification. Looking back, the 90s were a bridge between eras, a time of growth and transformation. We learned to adapt, to innovate, and connect in ways that would lay foundations for the digital world we inhabit today. There's a stark contrast between the simplicity of those times and the complexity of the present, where the pace of life has accelerated beyond any recognition. Now the 90s may be a chapter closed, but its resonance in our hearts is eternal. It was a time when childhood was an irreplaceable treasure, filled with the purest laughter, the grandest of adventures, and the friendships that were destined to stand all the tests of time. So grab a skateboard and together let's raise up a glass of Kool-Aid and toast to the timeless magic of the 90s childhood, forever woven into the fabric of our lives, a tapestry of heartfelt memories that will never fade, they cannot fade, but that now, in the depths of nostalgia, carry a tinge of sadness for a world we can never fully return to.